Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as I show you how to build this super simple Bronco uh, electric powered model from foam board. Let's get to it. I've made a number of foam board airplanes and I like them a lot because they go together very quickly, they're inexpensive, and due to their light weight, they really fly well. So put a card up for the foam bug. Uh, this is one of my more finished designs right here. Uh, all the information is in the video of the foam bug. A E-Flight Park 370 motor, I fly it at about less than one half throttle, it flies fine. The one thing about it though is the foam can be a little bit wiggly. Um, it's not rigid due to the nature of the foam. And so what I wanted to do was think about a design of a model that could take the advantage of the quick building, low cost of the foam, maybe be a little bit more rigid. Now for something like this you could put in 1 32nd inch uh, plywood, even maybe 1 16th inch, add some weight. But I thought maybe there's a better way to build the design of the airplane that the design would make it rigid. We didn't have to worry about the inserts. And so what I do oftentimes when I design an airplane, I look at pictures of full-scale full scale airplanes just to give you an idea of the layout, engine placement, characteristics to build into that model. Not a scale model, but represent, representative of it. And the model I came up with is the OV-10 Bronco. So this is a view of the Bronco. These are the three views that I used to draw the plan. I'll show you here shortly. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the OV-10 Bronco. In this video of my foam board Bronco, you're going to see an image, and I'll, I'll put it up right after this um, little segment of the hand-drawn plans of the Bronco. It may not be super easy to read, but as I'll discuss in the video, the one-third size, so for example, this wingspan is 10 inches on the paper. You just measure 10 times 3 is 30 inches, that's the wingspan. So any measurement here can be brought off, can just be measured on the paper multiplied by three and you have the full size. What I wanted to point out is this plane flew so well today that I'm going to take the time to draw a full set of very clean, uh, professional looking TurboCat plans for the Bronco. That will be in a separate video in a couple of weeks and I'll show you the process I use as a TurboCat training how to draw the plans and there'll be a picture of those plans. Just take a screenshot on your computer, print it out and take it to a FedEx uh, office to use one of their large format um, printers. I'll put this up here, a picture of it. They work great. You just print out whatever's on your computer. You have a multiplication scale. Say you want to enlarge it 200%. It'll print it out 200%. You'll have a full set of plans for the airplane. The OV-10 Bronco was a close support observation aircraft designed in the late 1960s, originally flown by the Marine Corps eventually all of the services, about 360 were flown, and it was a very useful and uh, important aircraft in the uh, war in Vietnam. The idea of the Bronco would, was to provide a simple, easy to maintain, easy to fly aircraft that could be right at the front lines, dirt strips, near the troops, and fly long times over the battlefield, picking out targets and relaying that to ground forces and airborne forces for an attack. You might think a helicopter would be ideal for something like this, but helicopters are fairly complicated, need a lot of maintenance, and typically can't fly on station for more than uh, a couple of hours. The Bronco could carry two people, so you had a pilot and an observer. You could fly over five and a half hours. It could also carry a fair amount of munitions, rockets, bombs, etc., that would help it on submission. So it's a very popular aircraft. Uh, it flew well, and it's going to be a suitable candidate for an RC model airplane. As you can see from the pictures, the Bronco is a twin boom, single pod aircraft. I'm going to take the overall layout and just make it the engine in the, in the pod, so it's a single engine model, and the booms are going to support the um, tail and um, elevator. The idea that the cross members between the stabilizer and the booms will provide a more rigid structure for the model. 
In other videos on this channel, I demonstrate the use of TurboCAD, which is an easy-to-use consumer uh, computer-aided design program to draw plans. TurboCAD is a great program. It's worth your while to learn it. Uh, you can draw a model airplane plan very easily, quickly, trace over a drawing, etc. However, it is still perfectly okay to draw plans by hand, especially a simple um, plan like what I'm going to do for the foam board Bronco. So what I did on this case is I just took two pieces of paper, taped them together, and I drew a plan that is one-third the size of the airplane. So we can see that I have the wing located here. It's a simple rectangular wing, much like the Bronco. And what I did is, this wing is 10 inches long on the paper, so I just 10 times 3 is 30 inches for the full-size um, model on the foam board. So any dimension along here, I can just measure it with a ruler, multiplied by 3, and draw it out on the foam board. The reason I use 30 inches of wingspan, 30 inches, is the width of the foam board. So this will be the width of the Bronco. Again, this will make it simple because I don't have to make two halves and put it together for dihedral drawing. The other tail booms, um, etc., the pod will just be drawn onto here from the plan, cut out, and just put together with hot glue. So again, this is a simple, affordable foam board Bronco aircraft. It will be single engines, so we don't have to worry about two engines. The boom structure with the tail will provide some rigidity, I think. It's only about 17 inches along, which should help with the uh, flexing problem. The 30-inch wingspan is just a sheet of foam board. It'll be a flat wing, again, like the Bronco. There's no need to make two halves and connect for the dihedral. And also, the hatch will be fairly simple in the middle of the airplane, enough room to put in the two-cell LiPo battery. The electronics and the motor will have enough length of the nose to provide uh, weight for the center gravity balance if I want to do that. Also, again, to keep it simple and easy to build, I'm going to only use three channels of control. So it will be throttle through the electronic speed control, elevator, and ailerons. There will be no rudder. There's no need for rudder because I'm not going to put any landing gear. There will be no landing gear, so it's just going to be a simple three-channel model, straight wing, no dihedral. Also, to cover it, I'm going to use um, colored packing tape. It's lightweight, um, very colorful. And we'll put that on to decorate the outer uh, dimensions of the uh, airplane. The foam bug uses ion covering, which is fine, but this will be a little bit less work with the uh, pack colored packing tape. So this is a standard 30 inch by 20 inch by 3 quarters inch foam board. Um, I'll put a, a card up here for foam board airplanes for beginners. It can be obtained from a variety of, force, of uh, stores, craft stores, dollar foam stores, um, etc. This is an example of the arm and wing technique for the foam bug flyer. This is actually 42 inches in length, so 20 inches per half. It's joined in the middle of the dihedral. For this um, foam uh, bronco, it's just going to be 30 inches. We don't have to worry about the dihedral joint. But the important thing is we're going to use the arm and wing technique to make the airfoil on the wing. I've got a video card up here that shows you exactly how to make the wing the full 12 minute video. What I'm going to do now is just include an extract of that, about a four minute video that will give you the essence of how we make that wing very quickly from foam board for the spars, the, the wing itself, and it just comes out very well. So this is dried in place. We're going to fold it over. We'll draw a line along here, trim off this back edge, and then on the bottom of the wing we'll bevel it so that you have a smoother transition and then glue everything in place and we'll be done. So here's the edge of the wing. We'll draw a line just like this. And then with the sanding block, it's important to use a sanding block. Don't use your hand. This is 100 grit. That works about right. And you can see the bevel on the side, probably about a half inch in. And when we put that together, you get a nice, clean edge. Now, when you glue this in place, try to keep the glue on the inside. If the glue, if there's too much glue and it squirts out, it's going to make it very hard to sand the trailing edge because you're going to be trying to sand the very soft foam with the hard glue. and It just won't work out well. So we'll put a little bit of glue on top here, a little bit, bit, bit of glue along here, and that will be the wing.
I'd like to discuss now the components for this airplane. Again, it's a simple, basic, there's nothing special about this. These are the extensions I got from Amazon so that the aileron servos could go out with the wing. Uh, there's room for that, so we'll use those. I've decided to use the Park, um, the E-Flight Park 370 electric motor. It'll be more than enough power. The same one I have with the foam bug. That should work out just fine. The electronic speed control, I'm going to use the uh, Talon uh, 15 from Castle. Again, a standard speed controller. The servos, I'll use a high-tech HS55 for the elevator. And then these are the two HS40 um, servos I'm going to use for the ailerons. I think that'll work out well. And finally, a six-channel receiver. I do have the Spectrum four-channel receiver. Maybe it's a tad lighter than this. I'm not super hung up on the weight. The reason I'm going to have to use the six channels is I've got two aileron servos. If you try to have two aileron servos with a four channel setup, there's not the auxiliary channel to plug in the other aileron servo. It has to be in the extra channel six here, set up with a transmitter to handle the two servos. So just something to keep in mind if you want the standalone aileron servos, which I highly recommend these days, you'll need at least a six channel receiver for that. So the next step is to transfer the information from the plans. Again, just take every dimension, multiply it by three. I put it on the foam board, cut it out. We we'll use hot glue to start putting it together, and we'll do that step by step coming up. Here is my trusty hot glue gun, about $10 on Amazon. So this is the beginning of the wing. We have the two halves. Um, well, it's, it's one piece of foam. I've marked down the spar one inch in from the leading edge two fo uh, foam spars one inch wide and they'll be glued in place on the, on the inside the wing. Here is the wing getting ready to be folded over. The two pieces of foam board for the spar are shown there one inch back and I've sand sanded down the trailing edge of the wing to bevel it to make it about 1 16th inch of the trailing edge would complete. This is a completed wing. You put the hot glue on the spar and the trailing edge Notice a little crease as the wing bends over the spar. Not a problem. The airplane will fly just fine with that. Another view of the hand-drawn plans. As a reminder, I will drop a set of TurboCAD plans for this. Uh, but from those plans, I sketch out the side view of the fuselage, make it a little bit of adjustments just for appearance on the foam board. Once you cut out one fuselage side, that's your master. You trace over it for the other three sides, and this is what they look like here. Again, you'll glue them two together so you have a two-width side. The two booms, uh, two pieces of foam board are glued in place. Be very careful to get those straight. And the real key thing is you want the height of the um, fin the same because that's where the elevator will be, uh, stabilizer will be glued on. Stabilizer is glued in place, making a nice rigid structure. The elevator is cut out and the elevator with a beveled front edge is attached with clear uh, tape. I'm always very curious on the center of gravity, so what I did is I took a scrap piece of foam board, the length of the nose, and I just put on the motor and the battery to see how it balances out with the center of gravity 25% back from the leading edge. It worked out fine. There's a CG marked on the plan side. These are the two fuselage halves cut out, ready to be glued on place on the wing. The fuselage sides are glued in place with a two-layer foam for the beginning of the fuselage, uh, for the uh, firewall. Uh, in front of that will be one eighth inch ball, uh, plywood or two one sixteenth inch ply is what I used. I always recommend setting up your radio, making sure everything works before you put it in the airplane. <clears throat> Just a lot easier. So I've gone ahead and loaded the Bronco into the memory here, added the um, ailerons, uh, servos, one to each wing. It's a special setup of the menu. The elevator servo, electronic speed control. This is taped in, just doesn't short out. Remember, <clears throat> with any brushless motor, if it's turning in the wrong direction, there's three connections. Just reverse any two and it goes into the correct direction. So with this, I can see the elevator servo works fine here. The two separate ailerons work fine there. Just carefully hold this up and we'll see that the motor runs in the proper direction. So that's all set, everything works, and I can go ahead and put it into the airplane. So this is the foam board Bronco so far. It's kind of interesting to
see how it compares to the three view. Note the big difference is the Bronco's engines on each wing all have an engine up here. However, this might make, be a very interesting project for the next one to put twin motors on each boom. We'll see if that's something we want to do. Again, here are the plans uh, so far. As a reminder, whatever measurement you take in this plan, multiply by three. So you can see in this plan, I to lay out the model to cut the foam, I just put all the dimensions in here, measuring off this one by three plan to include the side pieces along there. So you can draw plans by hand for these sorts of model airplanes. So things I want to point out is this was the arm and wing technique for the wing, but we have the ailerons on each side and I glued in a solid panel across here of foam board. Notice also on the ailerons you have to bevel the edge here so that the aileron can go down without binding. So just remember to, with the um, sanding block, bevel the edges for here and for the elevator so that it can properly go down. As I mentioned at the beginning, there's no rudder on that. That'll simplify things a lot for the model. To control the elevator, I will have the elevator servo. I plan on using the Dubro micro push rod system. So the push rod will go out and around here to do the elevator up and down with the servo here. The nose, I believe, is long enough that I can put the battery forward and the motor for the proper center of gravity. The ailerons for the wings will be here and here. I'll dig little dig, um, cutouts for the ailerons there. I think the wires are going to be long enough for the ailerons to make the distance from the wing. If not, I do have some extensions for the aileron cords from Amazon. So, so we'll see how that goes once I um, install the ailerons. The design goals of this Bronco, the twin fuselage, is to make things uh, rigid than the other foam board planes. This is a very rigid setup. There's two layers of 3 16th inch foam board here, um, hot glued together. The stabs on top. It's just a very strong structure. I do think you need two layers of foam to, prov to provide enough rigidity for the tail. That's an important thing. The hatch, of course, holds the motor, which will go here. But one layer on each side with all the gluing surface to the wing should be plenty for something like that. I'm going to locate the servos in here, the receiver, all that stuff. Then I will glue on a top and then there'll be some sort of hatch that I'll put for the forward part as we go along here. The bottom is already in place. I use clear plastic tape, scotch tape for the hinges on the elevators, on the ailerons. Again, this is a prototype model. I'm not rounding any edges or making it too uh, pretty for pr presentation purposes. The idea just see it, is to see how it is with the nose moments, the weights, the wing areas, all that stuff to see how it flies. If it does fly satisfactory, it's very easy with foam board to make another more presentable model. Another thing that eases construction a lot is there's no landing gear. Um, again, I think it'll look fine flying with the, the illusion of no landing gear and that saves a lot of time, effort, and weight with building and designing the model. I completed the installation of the radio equipment on the Bronco. <clears throat> so let's go over that. Uh, this is the receiver. A little bit of Velcro holds it in place in this location. This is the elevator servo. I did it at an angle. You notice I've got a push wire with an outer tube that goes through the, uh, hat, the uh, body, fuselage body side. The wire is thin enough it can bend up and over this way until it connects to the elevator servo like this, uh, to the elevator elevator control horn like that. So you need thin wire to do that bending, and that seems to work out okay. It's a little bit of a weird angle, but that's that. One thing I want to point out, you'll see these holders here for the wire. You can screw this and adjust the wire in and out. The problem with this very thin wire to allow it to have the tight radius of bending is the wire does not provide a good surface area for that screw to hold it tight. You can tighten the screw pretty tight and the wire can slip out. So what I did was I put some epoxy in there to hold it into place just to keep, it in mi keep that in mind. The aileron uh, servos, <clears throat> I have them underneath here, just a straight connection uh, to each of the individual ailerons with the wires uh, located in here. And I cut a hole in the fuselage to connect to the receiver. Now I made a little strategic error here by putting the servos on the bottom. You do that normally, I use uh, double-sided sticky tape to hold them in place. But they stick out with no landing gear, they're just going to scrape on the ground, which is kind of dumb. 
So I put in these side skids just to protect the servos on the ground, um, 1 16th inch plywood. What I would do if you're building this at home, take these servos, simply install them on the top part of the wing and you'll bypass that situation. You'll just have to figure out how to drill them through the pylons. Again, another item on the um, hinges, I use uh, clear tape for the um, hinges on the ailerons and elevator. Note you have tape on the top, which is fine. With tape just on the top, the hinge can, the control surface can be a little bit floppy because there's nothing holding it in place. It's a good idea, but tape on the bottom. Remember, because of the beveled edges, turn up the edge, put the tape inside so you're not making it rigid in one place, and that works out fine. As you can see, the battery will locate in the front here. I tested that before, so the battery and the motor, I just tacked them in place. The center of gravity works out about right. Nice large hatch area here. I will put some permanent covering uh, along the curved section here, and then this front will be the removable hatch to have access to the controls and the battery. We'll work on that tomorrow. As always, when you're building these models or making modifications to the model, it's, it's a good idea to try to think ahead for future problems. Notice for the firewall, <clears throat> I put in two pieces of foam board just to have a starting point here, then two 1 16th inch pieces of plywood that are hot glued onto the foam and then to the sides. I think that's okay, but I put in a little bit of uh, plywood reinforcement here. I may add some more once the motor goes in place. Once I install the motor, as always, it's a couple of degrees down, a couple of degrees of our right thrust um, seems to work out about right for these models. But what I wanted to point out is obviously you have the three um, power cords, power connectors to the motor. That has to get from the front to the back. So I cut out a slot here, mounted the firewall high enough so that these connectors just fit through like this when it's time to hit it to the electronic, hitch it up to the electronic speed control. If I didn't do that beforehand, it'd just be a big pain in the neck to try to do that after the fact. So just a, a word of the warning. Also, when I'm testing out the servos and all that, I do not have the motor connected just for safety item, but realize these are hot connectors. If they touch each other, it'll short out. So I just take some masking cape to keep them separate so that I don't short out the system by inadvertently uh, having them touch when they're outside. One thing I wanted to point out were things as simple as the nylon control horns. You can see the control horn here, same control horn, each elevator and the rudder and the elevator, each aileron and the elevator. <clears throat> well, what has to happen, they have to connect to the control surface, and there's usually an idea to have some sort of reinforcing mechanism on top. Now, because of the range of providers for the Almost Ready to Fly um, market, there's a lot of items available that I have no idea what company they are. This is Hobby Park. It's a company out of China, made in China, and they produce these things just en masse. So on Amazon, it was interesting to get this because this is a control horn here. It's a very nice little setup because you have the horn, you have a base plate, and then on this connecting rod, you don't have to mess around with screws like we did in the past. There's a little top, and you can't see it on the video, but there's little ratchets along here. So when this fits on, I can just feel it friction fit on top there. So this holds everything in place over the control surface. It's really a very innovative way to easily put in the controls, horns, have something on top to keep it into place, add a little bit of glue, trimmed off the top, and it just, it works out just fine. Again, I just found that on Amazon.com, uh, got a bunch of them, and it was just all set for the model that I'm building here. So there's a range of equipment that really wasn't available earlier for the almost ready to fly models that can be available for your home use. This is a completed Bronco. Um, we're really all set to fly. So let me show you a few things that I did today that are, that are relevant. First of all, here's the hatch. What I did was I changed the hookup to the elevator servo. Before, you notice I had the um, little bolt on top like this. But as I mentioned, with this very thin wire, it was very hard to get a, a good um, fit onto the wire. And sure enough, it came loose. So what I did was my standard overlapping technique. I had some music wire here. It overlaps inside the heat shrink tubing. Plug, um, put on the heat shrink tubing, shrinked it a little bit of epoxy, and I think that'll be a lot sure installation for the rudder. So let's see how the control works. So this is elevator, and you can see up top there's plenty of elevator throw, and the ailerons look good, and the motor. 
absolutely plenty of power with a two cell motor. So um, that's good. And the other thing I wanted to point out is the center gravity about 25% back and it balances out just fine at that location. I'm experimenting more with the colored packing tape. This is red tape, obviously. It's extremely strong used for packing tape, extremely lightweight. And I just um, put some on here. You can see alternating with the yellow back here on the tail. I cut this with the razor blade to make it a little bit thinner. It's, it's a good thing to cover these foam board models. It's lightweight. It goes on, but it's very, very sticky. And the more I play around with it, it's best if you can cover components like the wing or the fuselage sides before you put them into place. The tape is just so sticky. You want to make sure everything's okay. And when you have an assembled model and it's touching other surfaces, it can get a little bit difficult. But it's a good, easy, cheap, lightweight way to decorate your foam uh, models. The other thing I want to point out that I realized as I was uh, doing this, notice that I just put the two aileron servos on the bottom, okay? If I were to do this again, what I would do is I'd simply take one servo, like the elevator servo, put it here, and with the control arm, with these types of bendable tubes for the control uh, uh, surfaces, just snake it out here and go right to the ailerons, then with the curved tube here. That way one servo could control both ailerons. It'd be inside the, uh, the body of the airplane, and you would not have this dangling out below with a no landing gear model. So I think when I do the plans, that's the way I recommend doing it. But just as part of the design process, you see how things are done, then you figure out other ways to do it. The weight of the, bon of the Bronco is one pound and four ounces. Seems okay to me. It, it's, it's a little bit heavy with the battery and the motor, but I think it's got enough wing area, certainly enough power. One pound, four ounces. We'll give it a try and see how that flies. So the next step is to wait for some good weather, head out to the field and give it a test flight. So at the field, we will give a test flight to the foam board Bronco. It's a nice clear day, a little bit of wind, but um, we'll give it a shot. We've completed the first flight of the foam board super simple Bronco and you can see from the videos it just I couldn't be any happier the way that it flew. It's just it's just an honest flying airplane. The uh, control surfaces are fine, up down for elevator, I could do everything. To include the ailerons, you want a little bit more throw because a light model like this you can slow it down. When you're flying slower, you just need more control throw to control the aircraft. But the other advantage I found from it Due to the kind of unique setup with the tail boom, and plus the color seams that I put on the top, you notice it's white on the bottom. It's very easy to keep your orientation, which side is up, whether it's coming at you. It's just, uh, this is a real benefit of the tail uh, section. So again, very satisfied with this, and uh, look forward to drawing up a set of TurboCAD plans, and I highly recommend this for a model if you wish to build one. 
I want to show you the uh, control surfaces. First, we'll just do the motor. You can see with the 370 motor, there's tons of power. I'm flying it like a quarter throttle. But just so if you build one at home, you can see the elevators. This is up, down, and that seems to be really just about right. Notice the ailerons is a little bit less movement. But they're big ailerons on both sides. That is absolutely sufficient, as you can see from the videos, for everything. We are back from the flying field. Had a wonderful set of test flights, two flights this morning with the foam board Bronco. I could not be any more pleased with how this airplane flies. I think you can see in the video that it just was nimble and handled well. I really like the aileron for the bank. There's no rudder on this airplane. Control throws were enough. It just handled fine. It was just very comfortable. I flew it a little bit slower just so we could see it in this video. I was probably at a third throttle or less most of the time. If this goes to full throttle, the Park 370 motor is just going to scream along. So just a fun little flyer. I mean, it couldn't be any easier. You throw it into your car, the wing's all loaded up. You literally take off the hatch, put in your battery, and then you're good to go to fly. Um, just a very pleasant airplane. I highly recommend that you consider uh, building one for yourself. Just a great little plane to take out to the field.